viewers. Yeah. So, hello everyone. Um, my name is Ondra. I work as a CTI analyst for uh, Red Hat. Just for the clarity, our team is part of the internal InfoSec. Uh, so our main stakeholders are uh, various Red Hat uh, teams and executives. I joined uh, Red Hat two years ago. Before that, I spent almost 15 years working for the government uh, in, uh, sector uh, in various threat intelligence roles. My last job before Red Hat was uh, for the Czech National Cyber Security Agency, where I uh, co-founded and led uh, for five years uh, the strategic threat intelligence uh, analysis uh, function of that organization. Today I would like to talk about uh, uncertainties. I first define what they are. Uh, we'll have a look at tools that, that can help us to overcome them. This will get us to two important uh, concepts, uh, words of estimative probability and levels of confidence in assessment. We then check how uh, some of the major CTI vendors, uh, without calling them out, uh, use them. And I will have some tips on how to apply uh, words of estimative probability and how to integrate these concepts into your analytical uh, process. Donald Rumsfeld may not be your uh, favorite politician, but I think he nailed it with the quote on this uh, slide. Intelligence analysis is a word of uncertainties. Luckily, it has tools to overcome them. Uh, from the analyst's point of view, uh, communicating uncertainties can be sometimes hard. But maybe surprisingly, from the analyst's point of view, understanding the level of uncertainties uh, can occasionally be even harder. Like, what do they mean by all these weird uh, terms such as we believe, even chance, with moderate confidence, and so on. Uh, from what I observed, uh, even reputable CTI vendors uh, and uh, CTI teams have occasionally hard time uh, to consistently communicate uncertainties, sometimes even in a single uh, report. But before we get to that, let's try to explore where the uncertainties come from. The starting point is that when analyzing a topic, we almost never have all the facts. The information is basically always imperfect. We call these imperfections intelligence gaps, and they are quite often starting points of our data collection, for, for example. Luckily, there are analytical tools that can help overcome these gaps such as assumptions, judgments, and assessments. Another source of, uh, another source of uh, uncertainties is the fact that CTI, uh, th that in, in CTI, we assess and factor in human uh, behavior. And that is, uh, that is difficult. And the last reason that I see as a source of uncertainties is that in some types of uh, analytical deliverables, we occasionally do outlooks or predictive analysis, if you like. So we just said that judgments and assessments are the right tools to overcome uncertainties. But at the same time, they are also a source of uncertainties. When we make judgments and assessment, most of us have this natural tendency to kind of soften the language that we use in these circumstances. The way we do it is using uh, words such as might, could, probably, we believe. The problem here is that these words can be very misleading. And as most multiple researches uh, proved, they very much depend on interpretation. The intelligence analysis uh, discipline developed over time multiple standards for these words. We call them 
words of estimative probability, and they express how likely we think our judgment uh, is. And as I said, there is a plenty of these standards. Almost every intelligence community has its own. Uh, I don't want to discuss uh, them here or make any recommendation because this would take us uh, hours. You can review them and pick uh, one that suits you based on the needs uh, that, that you have. To complicate things even far, farther, uh, there is also a concept called uh, levels of confidence in assessment. Luckily, there are not that many of them. I actually know only, only one. And that one distinguishes levels of how, uh, how supported are your judgments and assessments by information uh, that varies in scope, quality, and uh, sourcing. Low indicates uh, sig significant problems with sources. Uh, moderate says that sources are okay, but not great. And there is the high level for high quality information. Unfortunately, many analysts and CPI vendors have tendency to interchange uh, these two concepts. And I don't blame them. Here is an example how we can use these two concepts. Based on the analysis of the malware and intrusion activity, it is likely that APT28 was uh, responsible for the unauthorized access and exfiltration of sensitive data from a particular organization. We have a moderate level of confidence in this conclusion. If you check this example, you see that it refers uh, to the likelihood of attribution and the level of confidence in this uh, in, two, in two separate sentences. This might be great. It's very logical if you have a time to think about it, uh, if you have fun, uh, time to think about the reasoning behind the two concepts. But here is a, here is a second example that you probably see more, uh, more often. Uh, it uses only the likelihood. From the intelligence analysis tradecraft perspective, it is still okay but it lacks the confidence in the assessment uh, part. And here is the most let's say, imperfect uh, example from the trade graph perspective. You basically present an assertion, almost authoritatively you claim it a fact, but you add how confident you are, uh, you are in the assessment uh, to acknowledge that there, uh, that this actually isn't a, a fact. So although the last example uh, might be the least desirable approach from the tradecraft perspective, I would say it communicates similar vibe uh, as the first two examples to the consumer. Uh, they will understand that the analysis or the analysts have some uh, indicators pointing to APT28, uh, but they also have some unknowns. So these are the basic approaches to the communication of uncertainties. Now I'd like to, to have a look how these standards are uh, applied in CTI reports that are published by information security uh, vendors. Here's a little comparative study uh, of how four different CTI uh, vendors approach communication of uncertainties. You can see here that uh, vendor A and vendor B have only one express expression of communicating uh, uncertainties. In case of vendor A, that is likely uh, for one report, and we believe for another report. And no they use nothing, nothing more. In case of Vendor B, it is with high confidence, and they use nothing more in the, in the, in the report. In report one from ve vendor C, there is a mix of words, words of estimated probability and confidence level. Uh, 
but there is no clear reason why they actually use these two concepts. What different, uh, what different ideas they should be expressing. I don't say there is no logic behind that. I just don't see it. I, I don't have an answer why this is happening, and I also don't say they are, they are doing it uh, wrong. Just that this approach is confusing uh, for me as an intelligence uh, analysis uh, professional. My ambition here is not to do a comprehensive comparative study of all the approaches or to name and shame uh, otherwise respected organizations, but to point out that we could do better as an industry. And maybe uh, this is, again, just my personal observation, there is uh, another issue. This time not on the industry level, but more on the individual level. Uh, addressing the presence of intelligence gaps and assumptions that go hand in hand with judgments and assessments uh, may seem very abstract and difficult to grasp uh, for people who transition to CTI from technical areas and are used to uh, working with plain uh, facts. And suddenly there is a lot of subjectivity. Uh, assessments may vary based on the available evidence and individual interpretation. The words of estimative probability are intended to provide a common language for uh, discussing uh, probabilities and uncertainties, but ultimately it's up to the individual team and individual analysts uh, to determine the appropriate uh, web based on the available information. I would like to provide uh, a bit of a guidance and go a bit more into the individual likelihood levels of the Mercyhurst University words of estimative probability. Well, interesting fact about this standard is that uh, the only major open source uh, that mentions it is uh, the Wikipedia page of words of estimative probability. So I guess it has to be legit. But uh, seriously, Mercyhurst is a standard that I like because it only has five levels. Uh, it's always preferable to, to work with, uh, with less options because anyway, you, uh, if you observe some analytical teams, they uh, never use all the, all the levels if there's too many of them. And uh, at the same time, they, uh, they, it doesn't include uh, some of the very ambivalent uh, terms such as even chance or we, we can't exclude. Uh, at certain level, you simply have to uh, make a cut and you have to decide whether you go for likely on or unlikely, which can be occasionally quite uh, uh, challenging. So what I'm attempting to do here is to break down words uh, such as likely, unlikely, or highly likely and make them a bit more tangible by describing uh, the type of information that you need to figure out which one to use. So if you see that an outcome uh, of an event is not guaranteed to happen, but there is a strong evidence supporting the outcome, a history of similar, similar events with the same outcome, and expert opinions that support the outcome, you can go with highly likely, for example. Yes, strong evidence, history of similar events are still debatable terms, but it would give you a bit more guidance uh, than just looking at the plain uh, likely versus highly likely and not being sure which one, uh, which one to pick. Before we get to the conclusion and some final clips, I would like to revisit the levels of confidence in assessment and point out that Approaches that effectively combine words of estimative probability and the confidence levels are quite complex for untrained recipients to comprehend. 
you and your team may come uh, to the conclusion that you prefer some alternative uh, that deviate uh, from the, let's say, canonical intelligence analysis uh, tradecraft. By that I mean combining these two uh, concepts for each judgment. Uh, as you can see in the, in the right one approach on the left hand side. Um, this might be a good option for some teams, mainly in the government uh, sector. If your consumers read a lot of uh, reports, uh, something like a few dozen reports a year, you may have a chance to educate them, explain how these standards work and so on. If you don't have this uh, level of access, which is quite often uh, the case, you may have a chance to, uh, you, you may try something different, something less uh, challenging, such as just the levels of confidence in assessment, because this is more approachable way to communicate uh, uncertainties. And I believe that what our stakeholders expect from us is not to rigorously apply intelligence analysis standards uh, and tradecraft, but to effectively deliver a, a message. If you overwhelm them by demanding reading, we don't deliver. Uh, it's important to find, find the right balance between professionalism and consumable uh, reports. My main point here is that individual organizations need to be consistent in their reporting uh, and transparent toward the, the consumer. Uh, if you allow me, allow me as a couple of uh, suggestions here, I would mainly recommend you to, uh, to make the effort and think about these concepts at all. Try to explore all the options, discuss them with your team. Consider the pros and cons of the individual approaches uh, for your situation, the type of reports that you are uh, doing, your uh, consumers, how often you have a chance to communicate with them for your uh, reporting and so on, and make a decision. Once you do it, integrate the standard to your analytical uh, process and deliverables. Provide guidance to your, uh, to your analysts. Let the team know that there is a standard and, uh, and, and try, to, try to enforce it. This will allow you to, uh, to be consistent across your production, which I believe is very uh, important. You are lowering this way the risk that your deliverable or your report uh, will be unclear or misunderstood. My last point is that you should be transparent and tell clearly to your readers what you are doing, what approach you are applying, how the words that you uh, use compare to each other. If possible, providing justification for the particular level of words of estimated probability or confidence for your main analytical points would be even uh, better, although I'm aware that this might be impossible in, in uh, some cases. To conclude, uh, I would like to get back uh, to the original question why the CTI industry struggles with communicating uncertainties. I do not have a good answer here, really, uh, but I assume that what contributes to, uh, to this is that there is no central authority uh, among CTI teams for these matters, of course, unlike in the government sector. All of the different types of CTI teams have different types of consumers and requirements. And in case of the public reports of CTI vendors, there is no, not a target persona eh, uh, or someone that could at least virtually demand something like this. But that's probably just a, just a part, part of the answer. I believe what is more important 
is to identify the fact that the CTI industry does struggle a bit with communicating uncertainties. I attempted today uh, to call this out and provide a couple of, uh, couple of tips uh, but hopefully uh, practical tips uh, on what we can do about this situation on the organizational and individual, individual level. And that uh, concludes my uh, presentation. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Questions? Uh, thank you for uh, for the talk, illuminating. Uh, I have actually two questions, maybe related. One is about uh, the, the right example you were giving, and uh, I actually find it the most confusing due to the fact that uh, in the assessment there are I, I see two levels. And maybe I'm wrong. The first level is the likelihood of the investigation, or likely that APT 28 was the culprit. And then you have a level of confidence in your own assessment. It looks like two, two, a multiplication for me. So it is likely 60%, but also you have doubts about the assessment that the, the facts were about likely. Uh, do, have you ever encountered this? What, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. It's, well, as I was trying to say, this, these are really two different, different concepts. It's about the quality on one hand, uh, the levels of confidence. It's about the quality of the information uh, that, that you have. Yeah? And, but it has nothing to do with how likely the result you see. Yeah? You can have a super good data and it will, the story still, the main point is that the outcome is very, very unlikely. Yeah? These are simply two different, uh, different uh, concepts. Yeah? And if you, are, if you are rigorous about that, you always combine these. Yeah? Some intelligence uh, agencies, they do, do this. But okay. as, as you can see, this can be very, very confusing for the consumer. So we better try to find something uh, more approachable. Yeah? Try to simplify it. Yeah? For instance, uh, as I said, we, you, can, you, can, you, you can use just the confidence level. Uh, you, you will just make an assertion. You will say, say that something happened or will happen and we are this level we have this level of um, uh, of confidence in our uh, in, in the judgment. Yeah. So it doesn't really uh, communicate well the likelihood, but more uh, how your team feels about uh, what they are what they are saying. Right. The point I get it. Doing, okay? And and then actually it is uh, the, your talk gives me gave me an idea. What about skipping the words which are confusing and going for numbers? So saying, you know, th this, this, uh, we, there is 80% that was APT. So if we use numbers, we can also input those numbers into, you know, filters in MISP or something and, and, and cut out noise from signals. Ever thought of that? Some, yeah, well, that's a way as well. Yeah. Most, uh, m most of the standards that I saw are trying to avoid that. Try, they are, because it's not about, uh, it's usually not a quantitative research uh, behind that. There is no, no like a, it's very difficult to quantitatively uh, express the, the likelihood. It's usually like, not the feeling, but you know, you have uh, the quality of your information. It's, it's qualitative approach. Eh? It's, you, you know that uh, uh, there definitely is a certain level like, it's not extremely unlikely. It's un just unlikely. So you 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 are able to distinguish it this way. Not usually not quantitatively. You, the, if you have the percentage in the brackets, the only uh, role it has is to distinguish between the the terms that you use. It's not about quantification of the of the of the likelihood because you would have to 
use completely different methodology for for example and this would complicate things further because you would have, you would have to uh, communicate the, the methodology how you arrived to that and you know that might be you might get into um, even more troubles i would say yeah. so i would definitely recommend to keep it simple but keep it consistent and transparent thank you very much any more questions Well, if not, thanks a lot for your presentation.